Jelly Pelly, Annie Parker Confidential. Happy Holidays and Merry Christmas. Tell me if this doesn't sound familiar to you. You've been invited to a lovely cocktail party and you're kind of stressing out because you're thinking, do I bring the hostess a little gift or don't I? What should I wear? How do I juggle a drink and appetizers? Don't worry, I got you covered. So whether it's a holiday cocktail party or really any time year round, these are good basic life skills to know and these are 10 basic etiquette rules at a cocktail party. I was not born with a silver spoon in my mouth at all. I'm from a solidly middle-class military family, but a long time ago, I bought a book like this thick on etiquette and I read it cover to cover. It's not about being somebody that you're not. It's really about learning how to be a more polished version of yourself. Number one, know how to dress. So here's the weird thing. If you Google cocktail party dresses, it really sort of runs the gamut from traditional cocktail attire, think a more conservative LBD, all the way up to full on girls night out attire. So really what it comes down to is this, know the event that you're going to and dress appropriately. If you're going to a holiday cocktail party or a cocktail party that's more of a business event for either yourself or your spouse, you're going to want to dress a little bit more conservatively. If it's something with good friends, you know that you have a little more leeway. Be sure to check out my most recent video on cocktail party attire. I'll put the link for you down below and it'll give you some really great options. Side note, before the holidays start, I always pull a few outfits from my existing closet and I put together cocktail outfits that I may wanna wear. I also buy a few things too, depending on my mood. Always make sure to try everything on first. That does a couple things. One, I need to see if it needs dry cleaning, which I usually send it out anyway because I like it to be fresh. And two, maybe it needs a little bit of tailoring. I also put together my bag, my shoes, and all of the accessories that I want to wear with each individual outfit and I take a quick picture of it. That way, if we're invited to something last minute, I can just pull it, put it on and go. I'm not worried that it needs dry cleaning and I know that it's perfectly tailored. Those quick little easy hints will give you a good head start to a relaxing holiday season. Okay, y'all, if you like videos like this, please consider subscribing to my channel. And if you like this video in particular, please give it a thumbs up. It helps my video rankings and I would greatly appreciate it. Number two, and every woman has probably learned this the hard way, I know I did. Make sure that you wear a pair of heels that you can easily and gracefully walk in. You don't wanna be teetering and tottering. It just looks awkward. You don't look very graceful and it looks like it's your big night out and you never get to go anywhere ever, ever, ever. I never go with more than a three to a three and a half inch heel. That's just my comfort level. That's how I can walk gracefully. I look elegant, but I still give myself a little bit of length because I'm 5'2" and of course I want to wear a pair of heels, who doesn't? I never, well, anymore, wear, wait, where are they? Here, let me grab. <gasps> You're gonna laugh. Okay, beautiful, yes. Never would I ever wear these out to a cocktail party because the ankle you save may be your own. And especially if you're having even a glass, glass and a half of wine, your heel gets caught on a carpet, um, yeah. Yeah, these seemed like a good idea at the time, way too tall for a cocktail party. I mean, listen, if you can wear something like this in spring denim and comfortable, more power to you. I'm just saying. Number three, and this is for all the women, choose a bag or a clutch with a chain or a strap. Let me show you. Yes, super cute. Here's the thing. You wanna make it as elegant and graceful and easy for yourself as possible. Scrunching a clutch between your body and your elbow holding a glass of wine, shaking people's hand, it just looks a little awkward. I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm saying that it looks awkward. Instead, choose one. This is my table of props. Choose one, equally beautiful, this is a Judith Lieber, um, with a chain. That way, <laughs> all right, what's wrong with this? This isn't elegant. This bag was way too expensive to be this difficult. This is just gonna be make your life much easier. And that way you've got one hand for your cocktail and the other to shake a hand. This is much more seamless. <music> On arrival to the party, please, please, please put your freaking phone away. That means 
turn it on vibrate, and put it in your bag. First and foremost, it's very, very rude to the host or hostess. Secondly, it's rude to other guests because it makes it seem like you have something better on. Third, in my opinion, it just makes you look insecure because it looks like a crutch and you can't let go of your phone in order to put yourself out there and talk to people. I don't like that. If you're in a situation where you're expecting, and I mean like an urgent call, not like, hey, your hairdresser's calling to say she can squeeze you in, turn it down very low. And if you need to take a call, step outside or remove yourself from the cocktail party main area. It's only polite. Five, do you bring a gift for the hostess or don't you? Yes, it's rude, rude, rude to show up empty handed. It looks like you don't know what you're doing and it doesn't look as gracious. Always, always, always bring just a small little gift for the hostess. It does not need to be expensive. It does not need to be a big deal. And as a matter of fact, it shouldn't. It should just be a little acknowledgement of her graciousness hosting you. My friends know that I love seized chocolates. So a few of them will bring just a little box of seized chocolates. They put it in a pretty little gift bag and a nice little thank you note for hostessing the party. My really good friends bring me a full pound because they know as soon as they leave, I am eating that pound of chocolate. I don't recommend bringing flowers for a couple reasons. One, the hostess has probably gone to a great deal of trouble to prepare the home and make it beautiful. And now she just needs to figure out where to put your flowers. Secondly, I have known some people to bring like a bouquet of flowers, like not in a vase. So now the poor woman has to stop what she's doing and figure out a vase to put the flowers. Just don't, just bring something small and thoughtful to the hostess. Yes, 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 always a small hostess gift. And finally, on the arrival portion, slow your roll. Look, it can be very anxiety inducing and I have felt the same way. If you're walking into a big room full of people that you don't necessarily know. So I ha tend to have a very animated personality anyway. And so when I get nervous, I tend to be a little more extra animated. So I have to really mindfully take a deep breath before I walk in and I let it out. And I maybe do that a few times. And then I consciously make myself walk in slow Slowly, with my head up, I smile warmly and graciously at everybody, just like this. Walking slowly, calmly, holding your head up and smiling immediately makes you look more confident, cool as a cucumber. Okay, let's talk food and drink, right? I mean, that is one of the best parts of a cocktail party. How to hold a glass of wine. Let me get my prop. So we, here we have a beautiful Waterford stem. We don't hold it like this. We don't hold it like this. You wanna hold it at the base, any stem, that doesn't matter if it is red, white, or champagne. You hold it at the base of the stem with these two fingers and your thumb, and your other ones will rest lightly at the bottom. In terms of how full the glass should be, for white wine, half of a glass. For red wine, about a third of the way up. When the bartender fills your glass and he fills it halfway up, never ever say, come on, keep going, don't be cheap. I did that many years ago. How to juggle your glass of wine and an appetizer at the same time. Okay, a lot of different etiquette people will have differing opinions on this. Here is what I find works best for me and honestly what I personally think looks more elegant. I choose one or the other. So usually before we go to a cocktail party, I will have a light meal anyway because I don't like walking in someplace starving. So I usually choose just to have a cocktail. If the buffet just looks way too delicious for words and I really want to sample some of what she's got going on, I just simply step away Away from the main area, I grab a friend, say you wanna go get a bite, and we will just go over by the buffet table, but I'm removing myself from the main area of the cocktail party for a couple reasons. One, I just don't wanna look awkward and I'm juggling, and two, I just find as a lady, when you're eating, inevitably somebody asks you a question, and it's just uncomfortable. You can't really enjoy the food because you, I don't wanna talk with my mouth full. After I've swallowed, I'm thinking, do I have spinach in my teeth? And I just don't like that. So once we've had a few bites at the buffet table, I'll excuse myself, I'll go to the restroom, reapply my lipstick, I make sure that I don't have anything in my teeth, and then I enter the main area of the cocktail party again. Oh, that's second. Always hold the glass in your left hand. That way your right hand is free for shaking. Number nine, I really hope this goes without saying, do not get flipping weight. 
wasted. So tacky, so tacky. There's nothing more inappropriate than an adult who drinks too much and just looks like a sloppy, hot mess. Do what you like to do on your own time, but when you're going to a cocktail party, and oh my God, for sure, if it has anything to do with networking or work, either for yourself or for your spouse, I always, always say a two drink maximum at the most. You're the boss of you, you can do what you want because you may think you're fine, but inevitably you will wake up the next day and think, oh my God, what did I ask that person? What did I say? And you just want to look like you are in control, that you can enjoy, that you can have fun, but that you are in control of yourself. I feel very strongly about that. And finally, as you're going to leave, never sneak out. It's rude to the hostess. Think of how you would feel if somebody just kind of snuck out of your party. Don't make a big deal about it, especially if you're leaving a little early. Quietly go over, let her know what a lovely time you've had, that it was a beautiful party, her home is lovely, thank her, and then quietly leave. That's all, no big deal. And a bonus, number 11, yes, 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 always, always send a thank you. The question is text, email, or a handwritten. For friends and good friends, I always just give a quick text and say, that was so awesome, thank you so much, I appreciate it, your home looked beautiful, the food was delicious. If it's for a business colleague, I will send a nice, fairly formal email. I think about the person, I think about what they would appreciate the most, and then I just kind of follow my gut. Regardless of what you do, always extend some kind of a thank you to them. Okay, those are my 10 basic etiquette rules. You can start using them right away, apply it at your next holiday party. And if you have any questions, of course, I always love hearing from you, so please be sure to ask me. And for all things wellness, fitness, style, beauty, and healthy living, subscribe to my channel, visit me on the blog, AnnieParkerConfidential.com and I'll see you on the blog. Happy holidays, everybody. Merry Christmas.